We're here with Oscar Lopez Rivera. Uh, he is a Puerto Rican activist, uh, decorated Vietnam War veteran, and a former political prisoner uh, who was granted clemency by uh, President Obama in 2017. So first, Oscar, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. We're, we're really excited to be able to have a couple questions. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So um, you're on an activism tour of sorts, is that right? Uh, we're, we're trying to uh, reach out in bring the case of Puerto Rico to young people in the United States. This is our first uh, tour, and we started in, on the West Coast. I'll be back in April again. So uh, the, the idea behind this is how do we uh, bring the case of Puerto Rico forward, but also how is it that we can do things that are uh, reciprocal. Uh, Let's say that the issue of immigration, uh, if, if, if there's this issue out there and we in Puerto Rico uh, should respond to that, we should defend and protect and do everything we can to face that issue. So uh, it, it is it's a way of probably finding uh, more and more solidarity among Latinos and among every person, every individual who's trying to create uh, and need changes, so mm -hmm. th that's basically what we're looking forward to. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, I know you write as well a lot about environmental issues in Puerto Rico and elsewhere. Um, what do you think needs to change in the United States to be able to help address um, environmental issues, and what are the main environmental issues that Puerto Rico faces? Well, right now, right now, the, the whole thing of global warming, Mm -hmm. uh, Puerto Rico is definitely uh, been affected already. Once, once the water, the the the, the ice is melted, mm -hmm. that water is going to be growing, 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 and the Atlantic is a very powerful, very powerful. The waters in the Atlantic are very powerful. Most likely, Puerto Rico will be affected on the northern coast of Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. but it's going to be. We already we already measuring the water is coming higher and higher, so the northern coast of Puerto Rico is going to be badly affected. Mm. And um, is is knowledge about that um, is obviously important. But what what steps do you think as uh, community members should people try to take to help uh, bring solidarity with Puerto Rican um, and stuff like that? I I think that solidarity is something that is needed in order for us to really reach the goals that we have, are trying to set. And for, for us, from the Puerto Rican side, the, the most important thing right now is how do we decolonize Puerto Rico, how mm -hmm. we think about Puerto Rico to become an independent and sovereign nation, mm -hmm. because that's what we should be. We should, not, we should not be a colony, we should not be oppressed, we should not be exploited, we should not be denied our human rights, and all those things all those things are, are since Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico is a colony, all those things are affecting us. They have been affecting us for 121 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, next question. With regards to community activism, what does it mean and look like to you? Community, community activism in Puerto Rico right now probably is at a peak. Uh, in July, uh, a lot of a lot of the young people in Puerto Rico got involved into this issue of a governor who was very 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 corrupt, uh, very responsible, uh, had very little little appreciation of of the Puerto Puerto Rican people, and also he had an attitude that was completely completely off the wall. Uh, very disrespectful for the women who are involved in politics, very, very disrespectful of people who had uh, probably problems, uh, people who probably were on a wheelchair, uh, people who uh, had uh, probably uh, a situation uh, within the school system. Those are the things that we were worried about. This person should have never, should have never been in office. But in Puerto Rico, historically, from one generation to the next, one the father of Enrique Rosselló was the governor of Puerto Rico from 1992 until 2000. The father had set up a, a whole structure and the son followed it. So 
there's there's this relationship of corruption, there's this relationship of uh, insensitivity, and probably what we need most is a, a lot of empathy for the people, a lot of respect for the people. We should never devalue human beings. You know, we should all be respectful, and we should be uh, as as good citizens as we can be, and respectful of the other, and never, never, never uh, go into a position that condemns and belittles and kind of uh, makes the the person worthless. You know, the homosexual community was being affected by what 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 he was saying. So it is it is a question of how is it that we can uh, get rid of people like Dick Rossejo? We still have a bunch of them, and we need to change the political system in Puerto Rico in order to have a better Puerto Rico, a Puerto Rico that welcomes everyone, a Puerto Rico that does not discriminate, a Puerto Rico that uh, what everybody everybody. Uh, should be uh, treated as a human being, as a perfect human being. Perfect. And just going off of that, you might have already touched on it a little bit, but what advice would you give to people who care for their community and want to take action? I, I believe that it is important. It is important to take care of our communities. There is a lot of there is a lot of dysfunctional uh, uh, presence in 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 uh, the poor community, marginalized. Our communities, voiceless communities, need to be uh, elevated so that they can be functional, so that they, they can resolve the issues, the problems that they have. Let's say that a school is closed in Puerto Rico or a school is closed here in the United States and affects the education system, then we have to fight and then we have to uh, make sure that every child will have access to a good education, not just an education, but a, a good education. Uh, if, if school is closed, a lot of the kids in that particular community are going to be affected by that. If let's say that that we have uh, a, a case of uh, a disease, let's say that we have a problem in Puerto Rico. We have one municipality that's uh, been affected badly by cancer. We should be able to have medical facilities in that particular municipality so they don't have to come into an area, they, the, the, for, for example, Vieques is an island that is on the uh, uh, eastern part of Puerto Rico. In order for, for the Viequenses to be, uh, receive the medical treatment that they need, they have to jump, they ha either have to be flown in or using, using the vehicle that they have for in the, in the water. And, and uh, uh, probably about two, about two weeks ago, a, a kid uh, lost his life because they couldn't get him into Puerto Rico, into the hospitals inside the main island uh, on time. So uh, we, we lost a human being just because of negligence and just because of, of the, a very corrupt system that we have in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. So you yourself seem like a beacon of resilience and resistance to young people right now how what do you think your source of resilience comes from i think i think the the, the probably the, the main the main element in all of this is that in order for us to be effective we, we have to have love for what we do and love it's a it's a very powerful uh, energy. Uh, so I chose I chose to fight for our, our communities in, in in Chicago and also to to do for example we we uh, engage in uh, support of the African American community but we develop a very close relationship with the Chicano community Chicano Mexicano community a community. For example, we would go to the universities and we would struggle to open up the doors for Latinos. And we, it was never like a Puerto Rican thing. It was also for Latinos. It was also to, to, for, for the university to open up the doors to every, every Latino in the city of Chicago. And uh, as an example, uh, we pushed that into, uh, into different uh, places, whether it was in New York, whether it was in Florida, making sure that uh, the doors will be open and that doors shouldn't be closed 
we we dealt with the issue of immigration early on uh, in 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 here in California. Bert Corona, a founder of, of, of an institution called CASA, and that uh, institution was to protect immigrants. And in Chicago, there was there in the Chicano community there was a CASA. And we would definitely, I, I, as a matter of fact, I would come to California, about, I came about three or four times, and I would take undocumented workers to Chicago to, to make sure that at least they would find a job over there, and, and that they would, if they would take a job, that they would get paid, that they would, they would not be exploited. That's beautiful work. Um, I'm so another question, I have. Um, I know that you talk um, and also write about how uh, human rights abuses in the United States often go unnoticed. Could you uh, help us provide insight into those issues and um, the main the main points of what United States citizens should know about human rights abuses here? Well, uh, any 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 country that violates human rights is automatically committing a crime. And we should look at the violation of human rights as criminal. It's something that should not be happening. And, and right now, let's say, let's say that what they did with the children of, in, in the, in the uh, border, right? That should have never happened because mm -hmm. a child, let's say two, three-year-old child mm -hmm. separated from the parents, you know, for the rest of his life, he, that child is going to be affected by that. We should never allow such things to happen. We should never, never, never allow for our people to suffer, to go uh, in, in, under, to live under conditions that are completely dehumanizing and destroying the human being. So uh, I, I, I say that human rights cannot be tolerated and that we should always treat human rights violations as a crime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, Adrian, if you want to ask another question or if we want to break into more... Uh kind of personal stories and kind of like a... Personal story. Okay. I have a question. Oh. So what are human rights to you? What will you define like the ultimate human right? Uh, the human right is a, a complete, a complete, uh, a, a, if, let's say that we live in this country and we should have access to education, we should have access to employment, we should have access to living in conditions that are humane. We should do everything, those are things, let's say that you're discriminated against, you cannot find a job, okay? You should have access to employment if you need a job. If you, Education is the same thing. The whole treatment of health, anything that violates the human being, anything that takes away, dismantles the human being, we have to say, hey, that is wrong, that is a violation of human rights. Sometimes we you know, stay, use like immigration as an issue that is a violation of human rights. But when we deny our people the right, let's say, of, of uh, being able to exercise his or her uh, self-determination, that is a crime. So we have to really, really probably amplify uh, what a human right is. It's not a limited thing. But it's an open, open, but probably into different areas, different things. If, if let's say that you know, a person doesn't have a place to live, uh, right here in Oakland, you know, right here in in, 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 the, in the Bay Area, I see people, I had, I had not seen that in a long time, living out, you know, like, like with, with, a, with a little thing on top of them. Tents. Uh, tents, yeah. Underneath it, the freeways, yeah, 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 of course. So, so what happens to that person? And and most, 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 most often than not, these are people who are in need of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. If they're not there, it's because they didn't have a home. And everybody should have a home. Everybody should have a place to, to stay. In, the, in, the, in Chicago, we developed a project, which is a real, real, uh, a little, small project. Uh, and it's for uh, young people who who have you know, their 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 sexuality is not what the parents want, and the parents kick them out of the house. And this place is this is a three-story building, 
uh, any any of any 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 young person that is kicked out of the house can go there, and he will be protected or she will be protected, and she will have access to education. She'll have access to everything, all all the needs that uh, that the person has, that this young person has, uh, will definitely will be will be guaranteed. So I think that it shows us that 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 we can create environments and we can create places where. Uh, a, a person who's been thrown out of the house or has been kicked out of, uh, out of, uh, probably out of prison, and is out in the community, that person should live as a human being, not as an object that is a disposable object or a dispensable object. No, he's a human being or she's a human being, and we should respect them and give the person uh, the right to be uh, human, to experiment humanity rather than being out treated like a dispensable object. Gracias a ustedes. Gracias a ustedes. Gracias por todo.